Hello and welcome to another tutorial. So this time we are going to be continuing to add to our character controller and we're actually going to be adding onto the third person side of things. So what we're going to be doing is expanding the options we have in terms of camera modes. So let's dive on in. So at the moment what we have is our third person we, wherever we move the mouse, so whatever we do for our look input, the character rotates to that direction. What I want to be able to support is that I can rotate essentially independently, but the character's movement is still based upon the camera direction. That's my goal here, is the camera, I rotate it independently, but I'm able to uh, have it work where I then am looking in a particular direction. I might be looking at the character and then I move to the right and they actually do move uh, based upon where I'd expect them to. So let's dive on in and start to expand this. So there's a few areas where we're going to need to make some changes. One of the ones is in the player character motor, we have our camera mode options here. So we're going to add in third person. And in this case, the we've got camera rotates the avatar. This will be movement rotates avatar. So that's our new mode. So there's going to be a few things we have to change to make this work. And some of them are a little bit more obvious than others. One of the things that is a challenge actually is if we look at movement ground, we currently do the movement based upon our actual transform, which is great when we are always aligning it so that forward is, you know, in terms of the, cor the correct direction there. But we could be looking at the character from the side and when we move, our movement should be relative to how the camera is facing. So what I'm going to need to do is inside our state that we have. So we've got a lot of different things in the state here and I'm going to actually add in a public transform and we'll have the movement transform, or we might call it movement frame transform. Just so we've got something that gives us a reference point for uh, how we perform movement. Now, in most cases, that movement frame transform is going to just be the actual uh, transform of the character. So in a wake, what we will do by default is, okay, well state, movement frame transform is transform. So then our movement on the ground can go and say state movement frame transform, use that for forward and also use that for right. Whoops, grabbed a little bit too much. So grab that again. So, okay. That means our movement will be using the correct things, so that's good. So, okay, we've modified our ground movement. We have set up so that we can be setting that movement frame transform and what we now can start to do is our particular things for the actual uh, specific mode. So in our player character motor, in their awake, what we can do is, okay, if the camera mode is equal to movement rotates avatar, then we go and say, well, state movement root, or sorry, movement frame transform 
is our camera transform. And that will be our third person camera transform like that. So that's good. Now, the thing with this is our camera can be tilting. So that would use the correct transform there, but we'd likely find we might get some weird movement when we switch this over. So if we switch over to the movement rotates avatar, then when we're positioned, seems to be okay but we're probably getting some slight variations uh, in the actual move speed based upon how we're tilted because our forward vector for the camera is changing. So kind of what we actually want to do here is our forward, we want to project that onto the plane the character is moving on. So what I'm going to have is vector three forward vector is actually, we do a vector three project onto plane. We'll use our movement frame transforms forward. We use our states up vector, so it's aligned properly. And then we normalize that. So that's going to give us a forward vector that is projected onto the plane we're moving on. So it's always going to be a consistent length. So we'll change that to forward vector. Then we have our side vector, which is going to be very similar. We project onto plane. But what we do is rather than being forward, we project right. We again use the up vector and normalized. And then this changes to side vector. So now that will work regardless of which way we're sort of oriented. And it will also guarantee that this vector is always of a unit length that's coming in. That's really important. Likely what would have happened, it would have been subtle, but we would have had a variation in speed happening depending upon how we were tilted, because that forward vector was going to be a different length, which would mean at times we would be potentially pushing into the ground, which wouldn't be good. So, okay, that should be working a little better there. We're setting the camera here, but because we have locked the camera essentially, what we find is we can't turn it anymore now. So we need a way of being able to actually turn the camera. Okay, so we want to get the tilting working. And this is actually the trickiest part with this because so we've got our initial positioning of the camera and then we do have a regular updating. Now the way we currently work with the camera for third person is it is actually a child of the character that's moving. And that works great for the style of movement that we were, we were doing originally. But for this, it actually makes it very difficult positioning it. So what actually tends to work best for this is if the camera mode is equal to our new one, what I'm actually going to do is firstly, we'll have current angle is we grab the rotation of the character so that we can position the camera behind them. So we work out our local camera pause. And that's a new vector three. We do our boom length by mathf sign, and I'll convert this to radians. So we have that for our x value. 
we have the default height and then we have our camera boom length by math f cos of the uh, current angle. So this will just get the initial positioning of it correct. Uh, so we just get that lined up nicely. So what I do is very similar to how I'm positioning the camera here. I would do my camera transform local position is equal to that local camera pause that I've set up. And then what I would do is I would actually detach that. So third person camera, we null out the parent. So it's now detached from it. And then when we are doing the updating of the camera position, that will actually change a little bit as well. So we have our update camera third person. So what I'm going to do is a bunch of this logic is going to be honestly just specific to each of the ones. So I'm going to actually move these into here because what we do for this scenario is, okay, we kind of want to track, we've got this your delta, we need to actually be tracking our current your angle because we need to cumulatively add to that. It makes it a little bit easier than trying to work with sort of instantaneous ones. So have current camera your, which will default to uh, zero. So that looks good. So then down here, well, what we would do is current camera your plus equals, and we have our camera your delta like that. Then we need to position the camera. So our current camera height Well, we need to, we can't just read the local positions why, we need to actually know what its height is relative to the character. So what I'm going to actually have to do is I'm going to have to go and say camera transform dot position minus our transform position. So we've got a vector now uh, that corresponds from the, essentially the avatar up to the camera. And I'm going to do a vector three dot dot of that with our state's up vector. That gives us our actual height. So then we add to that our height delta. So again, I'm trying to avoid directly messing with Y values, things like that. That's fine here where it's something that's parented uh, or a child of the camera of the character but for something like of this that would actually be incorrect if we were on a different gravity i want this to ideally be able to work with other gravities as close as possible so okay we can then calculate our local camera pause which what i can do is it's going to be fairly similar to our calculation that we were doing here. So I'm going to bring this down. So we'll add this in here. Now our current angle, we do that. So it's our current camera your. We have our current camera height, so that offset relative to it. So I've worked out the local position here. The only thing that I will add in is that the current camera height will do a clamp and we clamp that value uh, between our camera boom min and camera boom max just so we're not going over the actual limit there.
that's good. We've got our position worked out here now. So what we would do is uh, camera transform dot position is our transform dot position plus the local camera one. That should now enable us to be orbiting around again. So let's test that out. So we can, and whichever way camera is facing determines which way we move, but we're not aligning to that orientation yet. So that's okay, we can add that in. We only really wanna do that if we're moving above a certain speed though. So if we're stationary, we're not going to do this just to avoid sort of small errors causing weird behavior. So I'll check if our state and our last requested velocity, square magnitude of that is not zero, or not approximately zero, then our transform rotation, we do a quaternion look rotation, we give it the last requested velocity and our up vector. And that should be it. They should now correctly face the right direction when we tell them to move, which they do. Works for moving backwards, can move forwards, handles fine when we're moving over stuff. So we have a little character moving around quite nicely and we want to check and make sure we haven't gone and broken everything so we'll turn off third person and switch back to first you can see that still works so that's good so we haven't broken first person mode we'll check the other third person camera mode make sure that that still works as well because again, easy to break stuff with this, uh, but that is working exactly the way we would want it to. So it's good. We have our character controller now supporting slightly different movement modes here, which is good. And it gives us sort of a bit more flexibility in give, allowing people to select a camera mode that more fits how they actually like the movement. Um, so different camera modes also allow you to experience the game slightly differently, but people are going to have preferences for you know, how they like the camera and the character to work. So this gives us a bit more in the way of options there with that, which is always good to have. So our new camera mode's going. Character is able to happily work with that. It works with the controller as well. So all of that is behaving perfectly. Mouse keyboard controller, no issues. Uh, so dive on in and experiment with this. You know, see what other things you might want to set up there. If there's different camera modes, we've now got a bit more in the way of controls for how those interact with stuff. Uh, in particular, doing things like detaching the camera and stuff like of that. But dive on in, see what you can create there, uh, and see how you go. Thanks, folks. I hope you found the video interesting and helpful. If you have, check out a like and subscribe. It really helps out. It's really appreciated. If you're looking for the code for the project, there's a link to that in the description below. It is available up on GitHub. You can use it in any of your own projects, commercial or non-commercial ones. If you've got any questions or things you'd like to see added to it, chuck those in a comment below as well. And if you are trying to track down other videos, there is a searchable video archive that I have linked. And finally, if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I do have a Patreon, and there's a link to that in the description below. But until next time, bye.